After talking to many atheists about their worldview, I began to wonder where their ideas came from. There is no way that ideas such as aliens creating us, or the world creating itself from nothing, could be drawn through rational thought. I came to the conclusion that they had to have gotten these ideas from someone else. I decided to look at what the modern proponents of atheism were teaching about the origin of life. To my surprise, Lawrence Krauss, Richard Dawkins, and many other leaders of atheism have stated that the world literally created itself from nothing. Of course, this goes in violation of the very first law of thermodynamics. If these scientists can't even come up with a worldview that's compatible with the very first law of thermodynamics, why would we listen to anything else they say? Professor Hawking claims that the Big Bang theory of creation can now be explained by science alone, without the need to consider some form of divine intervention. Because there are laws, such as gravity, the universe can, and will, create itself from nothing. All of the curriculum and the whole system is being run and mandated by people who are anti-God. They're not just neutral about God, they're actually anti-God. They actually have an agenda to teach atheism. They literally teach in the science class that the whole world created itself from nothing, which is stupidity and foolishness. But this is the kind of folly that comes out of the mouth of a fool. Only a stupid person would say, oh, the whole world just created itself from nothing. And if you don't believe it, you're uneducated. I mean, how ridiculous is it to think, oh, see everything that you see here, the whole universe, Guess what? It all just created itself out of nothing. There's no God. Well, where did this stuff come from? Oh, it exploded. What exploded? Um, I don't know, nothing. I was reading a news article and Richard Dawkins came out and said, I cannot condemn mild pedophilia. Richard Dawkins uh, has made some statements that some are considering to be a little bit odd. He essentially defended mild pedophilia a man who in one breath says, if you meet a Christian, mock him openly in public. And yet in the next breath, he'll say, oh, well, you know, I really can't condemn my old pedophilia. I don't see anything wrong with it because it was a different time. You know, the Bible stands true over time. Sure, we believe that the earth is 6,000 years old. Your mainstream speaker believes that it's okay to inappropriately touch children and openly accepts that it's okay. But yet we're the crazy ones. We're the crazy ones for thinking that the reason there are seashells at the top of Mount Everest is because of the flood and Noah. As I continued my research, I found that the leaders of atheism are teaching principles that are based on science fiction instead of factual and testable data. It's hard to argue against the possibility that all of us are not just the creation of some kid in a parent's basement, programming up a world for their own entertainment. And then every time something weird happens in the world, some disruptive leader takes charge, and I wonder if that programmer's just got bored. As I studied Neil deGrasse Tyson, I found that his views on reality are based solely on science fiction instead of observable reality. His views are the equivalent to that of movies like The Matrix and Star Wars. Now you're a character in that world and you think you have free will and you say, I want to invent a computer, so you do. Hey, I want to create a world in my computer. And then that world creates a world in its computer. And then you have simulations all the way down. I mean, it's ridiculous. But literally, because people have such a desire to just kind of fit in and not question things, they will literally go along with it to the point of, ha, 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 you mean you don't believe in the Big Bang? <laughs> it's like the emperor's new clothes. You remember the fable of the emperor's new clothes? Remember the emperor is naked, okay? And they tell everybody, oh, he has these new clothes and they're so beautiful and everybody talks about how great they are. And you know, you can only see them if you're wise though. And of course, the guy's nude, but everybody pretends that they see it, even though nobody sees it because it isn't there. If I was to come out and say I have faith in the Bible, I'm mocked, and Richard Dawkins has said mock Christians openly in public. And yet somebody wants to believe this. 
out of nowhere, nothing created something, and over billions of years, here we are. Neil deGrasse Tyson recently came out and he stated that he believes we're in a computer machine. He says he believes that we're part of somebody's video game system. So it could be a video game system, but not God. You know, Richard Dawkins came out and said, he says, oh yeah, I believe it's possible that we could have had aliens put us here. So he's saying that aliens could have created us, but not God. Stephen Hawking, that there was an article that was written about him, and they say Hawking has stated that given the vastness of the universe, aliens likely exist. Notice what the writers also say about him. They say he was also becoming more intuitive and speculative rather than relying on mathematical proofs. So Hawking point blank admits that he was becoming more intuitive and speculative rather than relying on mathematical proofs. Steve Hawking said that he was becoming more intuitive and speculative about his science rather than relying on mathematical proofs. In order for something to be science, it has to be demonstrable, testable, and provable. So if I came up to you and said, Nagasuchi, I want to be more intuitive about my science. I want to be more speculative. Is that science? No. No, I, I would say no. After doing my research, I've come to the conclusion that most atheists don't even know that their worldview goes directly against the very first law of thermodynamics. In this film, we have only touched the tip of the iceberg regarding the evidence for the biblical account of creation. The theory of evolution has been disproven time and time again by true science. Before this theory even came out, God's word warned us that these lies would come about. The Bible clearly tells us to avoid profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called.